this is a flotilla Friday call for Friday, June 4th, to, uh, 2021. Uh, welcome. Uh, we got a little bit started uh, before the recording, um, but not too much. Uh, we were starting to talk about link harvesting and, and uh, Mattermost bot, um, uh, specifically with Trove. Uh, Vincent is going great, great guns with uh, um, aggregating meeting artifacts onto events. And, uh, and uh, the thing that he's working on right now, one of the things he's working on right now is just getting links uh, extracted from the various metadata sources around a, a meeting. So it's going well. Um, uh, hey, Judy. Hey, Phil. Welcome. Can, can I just chime in quickly? I Because yeah, um, also part of what, we, what, what we're looking at with the agenda and started to touch on just before the recording, um, there's another layer on here, which I had suggested in the channel on Mattermost, um, we could touch on, which is the comments. And maybe something about this generative commons. Um, and um, I'm glad Judy's here. And uh, I mean, it, it's sort of all in the mix in terms of this um, federation and ag aggregating metadata between organizations, um, <clears throat> and then pointing um, into a session we're doing on Monday, Kiko Lab around the commons and P2P and DAO stuff and so on. So yeah, I just wanted to flag that as a broader frame as well for potentially all this stuff, including flotilla organization. Um, thanks, Charles. Um, just, I just say hello. Um, just thought I'd pop in for a bit. I haven't been to these meetings before and was curious. And I'm excited for what you're working on moving toward generative comments and other things. So, Awesome. Thanks. Um, will you be able to stay for an hour or so, Judy? Yeah, I can. Awesome. If I'm not in, 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 I don't want to just be an eavesdropper, but I don't know that I have much that's substantive to contribute either. Um, I'm delighted to hear, and I think yes. uh, it'll become apparent uh, quickly, I think. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, and Phil, hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, I've, I've talked to Michael about a few of these sessions, and he said they were, they were uh, pretty powerful and engaging, so I figured I'd come and check it out, um, awesome. and I'll con contribute where I can. Um, let me uh, let me talk a little bit about Phil, if, and I hope you don't mind, Phil. But um, uh, Phil works with Michael at Factor, and also um, uh, Phil just joined OGM as uh, a member of the staff. Um, uh, very, very, very part time. But uh, I think Jerry Jerry's excited about it, um, and uh, Phil and I will be doing some onboarding stuff to to work on OGM more. Um, and Phil, if we still have time in your window, I think actually you had afternoon time, right? Um, yeah. I, I would love to catch up with you this afternoon a little bit too. Cool. Um, good. Whereabouts are you, Phil? In New York also? Yeah, I'm in New York as well. All right, cool. I'm from um, New York, but I'm in Switzerland for more than 10 years, by the way. <laughs> uh, I'm, ac I'm actually, I'm, I'm moving to London in August, so I'll be heading closer to your direction. <laughs> oh, okay, very good. We've got a few London folks in the Plex. Um, uh, Link SDG would be an e a quick and easy thing to talk about, Charles. I, I, I saw that you asked in the channel. Um, the, so the, the, the thing is, they're mission aligned uh, with Flotilla, more or less. Uh, I, Flotilla, maybe they're a little bit more focused than Flotilla. So my general sense of Flotilla is that we're interested in inter interoperability and um, uh, obviously directories and matchmaking uh, and, you know, hooking up, I guess, tools for hooking up data, you know, data between between organizations and then hopefully people and services and processes that help hook up um, organizations and, and people and projects. So um, uh, Link, SG, Link SDG, um, their mission is connecting people to people and people to projects uh, within the scope of the SDGs. Uh, so they have a specialization on SDGs that Flotilla doesn't really have, um, which is which is fine. You know, they're they're still doing kind of the same thing. They're doing um, a hardcore uh, tool um, 
based on directories and matchmaking. So, or, or actually it's profiles and matchmaking. So it's right in line with Flotilla in that sense. The, um, so, and here's the, here's the, here's the news part of it. Um, uh, and I, I guess since, well, so I want to say something about link SDG, my observations, um, uh, as somebody kind of generally in the space, um, but I haven't worked with them a bunch. I've, you know, I met with Ivan and one of the other S link SDG folks. So this is, uh, where I'm going to say something. I feel like it's a little bit un celebratory. Uh, and, uh, I would say this to Ivan's you know, I, I would say this to Ivan. So Ivan, I'm not trying to hide from you and say something behind your back. It's just that you don't happen to be here. Um, but if you're listening to this on a recording, um, I'm just saying what I observed. Uh, so I think they've got, they're, they're obviously uh, well-intentioned, good heart, uh, you know, professional people. They, they know something about what they're doing. They've got a project plan um, and a fairly long timeline, um, kind of a six month timeline for getting something up and going. Uh, I think that they have um, underestimated the the difficulty of the task, um, and they've overestimated, or or they're they're being uh, they're they're not uh, they're they've under agiled, uh, so um, <laughs> their their milestones are are fairly broad you know they're like one and a half month milestones or two month milestones you know we can do this we can do this we can do this um i i brought this up to to ivan in, during our call and um he said oh no 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 that's just the the public uh, roadmap you're looking at and obviously we have much more agile fine-grained stuff um i was a little bit unconvinced um but you know maybe we just didn't talk enough and maybe they're they're doing cool stuff so the the secret sauce or the, the the idea their their mission their total mission is around connecting people around sdgs so um a tactic that they have to accomplish that mission is to leverage the linkedin um uh graph social graph uh which is massive of course it's it's millions and millions of people um pretty well interconnected um that's the good news about linkedin the bad news is that linkedin thinks of, of that as proprietary data and as the as their business model so they're not super happy about people poking around and trying to re replicate their social graph um uh, or, you know, horning in on their business model. Um, you know, obviously a big chunk of their business model is matchmaking between um, employers and employees, and, and that's their revenue model. So uh, Linked SDG doesn't want to make money off of this, but still uh, LinkedIn has, you know, structured itself so that it's not convenient to harvest their social graph or to matchmake around them or, or things like that. So that's kind of the crux of the biscuit um uh charles you want to hear more or thanks no that's really useful some of that i understood from before but that's um i appreciate that and i think others here may take i interest, think for you know. for thanks um for for my part i didn't see a good fit between me and and them you know i except for kind of we're both working on directories and matchmaking which is really cool i hope they are super successful um i would love to see them go you know we crack the code on how to do this within linkedin and we're going great guns i would be super happy to see that i don't think it's going to happen but i would be super happy to see it um it i'm i'm definitely not saying that we shouldn't stay in touch with them and charles if you want to make a, a deeper connection or if any of us want to make a deeper connection i they're you know they're working on the same kinds of things that we're doing matchmaking for social good matchmaking for mm -hmm. sdgs um so we should i i guess where i left it last last time last when we spoke about this it was like we should touch base with them every month or two and kind of see how it's going and uh if they're to a place they were super early they were like a month in uh to the to actually like going for it um yeah. so you know in a month or two maybe they'll have more artifacts or more tools or more questions and you know we should definitely hook up with them um, okay. I don't think I specifically invited them to Flotilla. Men, um, probably I should have actually, but I, I guess I didn't. I didn't want to waste. Well, that's it. cool. I mean, you know, I I haven't followed up yet, so that's part of why I was asking because I do yeah. want to, as I as I said, you know, keep keep it alive in whatever ways in the ways that yeah. I I do and I I like to do. Um, um, 
I guess just briefly, because yeah, there's other things to cover here and there's, there's uh, lots of people here, so it's great. Um, I think there was, um, I mean, we're, Lauren and I, Kiko Lab, were talking anyway with, with Vincent around Trove. And so I don't know if, if we need to highlight any potentials um, re relating to, to Trove possibly, but um, I think I also just wanted Lauren, you know, it's great you're here to, to hear a little bit more of that. I'm not sure how much you, you tuned into that before. And then, um, interestingly, uh, it actually was my, my LinkedIn inbox for, for connection requests gets a bit jammed, um, not to try to toot my horn, but I just, I, I spotted one that actually was from a couple of weeks ago that I want to accept with a note. And it's actually the um, director of, of um, UNDP SDGs. Awesome. And so um, I, I, I figured um, it was actually just timely to, to check on, on, it might not relate to that, that linked SDG project at all, but just the idea of, of, of how does the SDGs even relate to, to us, not just Kiko Lab, but, but actually the, the flotilla of sovereigns and, and so forth. Um, so if there's any quick, quickish high level stuff anyone wants to offer there, um, I, it just occurred to me to kind of throw that in the mix because I think this would be interesting to to try to hook up and do some something. Who knows what? Is there an opportunity with the SDGs to somehow embed that as a, a connecting architecture within the work that we're doing with Flotilla and other things? It just feels like it could be a, an important connective fiber. Yeah, I, I actually would like to touch on that, Judy. I think. When I first um, started doing like categorization systems for projects for Trove, uh, I, I didn't highlight the SDGs as like the most important category. I kind of just added them as topics, but there's like 700 topics. So they kind of get lost a bit. And I'm noticing more and more projects like either using or like focusing on SDGs or the 12 sectors as categorization systems. And um, what I tried to do was make like a superset of the um, Barbara Marx Hubbard 12 sectors and the SDGs and kind of tried to combine them in a way that made, made sense to have like under 20 main categories. And That's while I think that was, uh, I, I was just say one other thing. While I think it's really helpful um, for like, keeping the information overload down and only having like 20 filters that can describe everything um, that goes kind of beyond the SDGs. I will admit it lacks in the kind of like marketing, like the SDGs are just so marketable because like every company wants to be behind the SDGs. Um, you know, the, everyone wants to be connected to the UN or do a project that's related. And so like there's, there's a lot of like marketing, I guess, potential behind the SDGs. Like I feel pushed to include them as a more forefront of Trove just because people are like, oh, can we filter by the SDGs? And it's like, I'm like torn between like, I don't think it's the best way to do it, but I think people are just excited about it in general. And so that's where I'm at. My thought is just that it offers a mechanism for identity of affiliation. You know, if you see that four other people are working on the same subset of the goals that you are, you maybe are more likely to connect with them. So it's more, more like a marker than a push. It's sort of like, if I know I want to work on specific category X subset B, how would I find others that want to do the same thing? That's, I guess that's where I'm coming from, especially because there is an overload of citations, if you will. I honestly wonder if there's a way to, um, you know, like a word with a hashtag becomes something different. If there's some, some uh, character that we could put in front of something to denote SDG to um, make that a field essentially, but not, I mean, I guess that is privileging it in a, in a different way than, than other tags. Um, but I think it's something we're thinking about maybe. 
a profile field. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a layer I'll just throw in here, which, I, you know, I, I just kind of articulated for myself, but it's, I'm not, it's just, look, it came from like these two things, which are largely on LinkedIn, this, this guy, Ivan, who I um, got through another vague contact on Telegram, and then it just emerged, you know, on LinkedIn, and then, um, and then this other woman who um, I haven't interacted with, but I thought, you know, as an introduction, I would, I would have something beyond just welcome to Kiko Lab, maybe there's something more to say. Um, I don't, not, I'm not specifically advocating for the UN and that's all the kind of polarizing to some people in my world, they are always like the UN, UN didn't do shit and they're a bunch of crap and who knows things, you know. So I think that there's, 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 uh, there's usefulness in cultivating something. That, that's my semi-neutral position here, just want to mention. I, uh, so, so I'll go. I, I've, I'm kind of in, be I'm in between there someplace. Um, uh, the uh, UN is, <clears throat> I, I wouldn't. So the UN has a, obviously has a huge role to play in the world, right? Um, and also, it is a huge, massive, forgive me, slow-moving, you know, bureaucratic, bureaucratic, you know, way of of interfacing with. Yeah, probably yeah. things that are big and slow and bureaucratic and stuff like that, right? So it's got a, a definite, um, it's got a definite value there. Um, I think, I, and I like the idea of, you know, using these, if, if we could figure out some kind of like, uh, you know, actually SDG 01, SDG 02, SDG 03, maybe that's the hashtag that you use or something like that, right? Or SDG health or SDG, uh, you know, um, equity or something like that. Um, you know, a short tag that looks kind of like the Creative Commons tags. I think that that would be an awesome thing. I. But it doesn't I, exist already, actually. Isn't that weird? Um, huh. But, wow. But, but then it's using. So I I went through a thing where for some reason I kind of forget. Um, but uh, I sucked up the SDGs and then added some stuff that they were missing. And you know I, I needed a taxonomy for something, and and I came up with this one. And it's like they've got little holes in their taxonomy and or big holes. And then there's a lot of stuff that. You know, when I was doing taxonomy stuff in this, you know, there's places where you need these kind of weird loops, like sometimes you need, you know, the same thing in two places or stuff like that. Uh, so I would like, uh, you know, Massive and Trove and Factor and Kiko Lab to have some kind of amazing taxonomy of stuff where you could actually figure things out. Um, and match stuff. And then right away, it's like, oh my gosh, we have to talk to Mark Antoine because he would be the, the person who would be able to say, okay, so here's how, you know, here's how this simple hierarchy is not going to work because everybody has to have their own hierarchy. But I have an idea on how you could have like a hierarchy, you know, a bunch of hierarchies that you kind of stitch together with some data structure. So, you know, that's, that's like some kind of holy grail that I don't know if it's possible, but it would be interesting to talk to, talk to Mark Antoine some more. I, I would love um, kind of Flotilla to come to, you know, a generalized and not this one. It, this is just happens to be, you know, one that one that I'm semi familiar with. By the way, the, the best part of this is that it includes uh, the um, uh, the uh, benevolent uh, uh, emperor's um, uh, taxonomy which is super fun because it doesn't make any sense. Uh, mermaids, um, fabulous things. Uh, I forget this one, mangy dogs or young dogs or something like that. Things that you can't count. Um, uh, things that look uh, like the paintbrush from a camel hair, or camel hair, um, a, a dot from a camel hair brush, et cetera. Um, this is uh, by Borges. Um, Borges. So What's that? Borges. Borges. Yeah, sorry. I'm in, I'm American. I can't I can't say anything <laughs> that's not English. Jorge Luis. <laughs> Did you know? I, I was gonna make a bad joke. I won't. Go ahead. Um, we need one. <laughs> I was gonna say that I I don't know if you know this, but yeah, I I can't. Um, it's a, <laughs> a joke about uh, it's a religious joke that's funny in the U.S., but it, it's not something to record. Um, I'm be so offended. 
<laughs> Sorry. Go I, ahead. You know, I've got Go. friends who would be offended, and you know, there's no reason it's it's not needed. Right on. Um, One thing to add before we leave the UN is, um, I think the differentiating between the UN and people who are affiliated with the UN in some way is important. And there are so many, we, we have a lot of UN people on Factor. Um, one yeah. of them. And, and, and giving them a non-hierarchical playground to interact with each other across silos is a great thing. And they're, they're a great, you know, most of the people who are in the UN are, are there for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, so let, let's, that's, that's a brilliant idea. I love that. That's a good and, point too. Yeah. And that would be a great thing to reach out to Ivan for. It's like, Hey, take the SDG idea and just like focus in, you know, and get the UN people a, a good play space. I like that a lot. Um, so is there, I mean, if before we just move, move on to anything else, um, is, is there something in coming, not just from Kiko Lab, and I haven't talked to Lauren yet about this at all, but in terms of what we just talked about, basically in, you know, in regard to flotilla and, or do we make some big reference to sovereigns? I mean, maybe this is, you know, another part of the conversation we can, can do carrying forward. Um, is that interesting? Is that, is that a useful angle somehow in there for this um, co coalition kind of? Say that again. Gathering? or uh, <laughs> untangle it a little bit? I'm being a little tangly vague um, because I, 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 I'm i trying to be a little bit cautious. I don't want to presume or, or I, I'm also testing it to hear how it sounds in the air, but it's it's just like, um, regardless of, of where Kiko Lab is um, in terms of cultivating a relationship or exploring something in the whole universe of SDGs, um, and talking, of course, with, with with Vincent, maybe it's a simple thing to get the, the filters going and this hashtags and, and that would be already be a big boost. And then this other layer that Michael just suggested, I mean, that's already adding up to something interesting if we all want to, you know, sort of huddle around it. I guess that's, that's what I'm reflecting back here. Um, so maybe there's a, in, in OGM terminology, maybe there's a quest or maybe, maybe a project is another way to say it. Maybe there's a project of Flotilla that's, um, uh, kind of activating the UN, <laughs> but I I would do it. I would I would look at it. I mean, maybe maybe yes. And how about doing it in this amorphous flotilla federated way, where it's actually more like a skin or a layer that we put on top of each of our things if we want. Does that make sense? Uh, it's not. Yeah, it's, it makes, it's less it makes of a project sense. in itself. It's just more of like an add on. That, that's just what I'm, it's just very vague. I, I, anyone I, else I like respond? it. I want to be quiet now. Um, I, on, on behalf of Flotilla, and I'm only part of Flotilla, so I'm not saying that it's all of Flotilla, but on behalf of Flotilla, um, I feel like Flotilla wouldn't want to, um, wouldn't want to have the focus of, of working on the UN. But that's certainly something that Kiko Lab or, or, you know, Massive or Trove or, or factor, you know, any of those. Do you mean you mean the SDGs in particular, that framework? Um, because that's not the same as what you said. Yeah, SDGs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I mean a little bit of both, but yeah, the SDGs. So I think right. I think it's too specific for flotilla, <laughs> um, but but or it's one of many things, right? It's it's like okay, well, the SDGs are a flotilla thing as much as. You know, if you took the top level categories of, of Wikipedia, you know, that's it's kind of as important to Flotilla. They're both, you know, like awesome ways to um, aggregate a bunch of information or human work or, you know, politics or whatever. So I wasn't thinking of it as being something we were under in any way. I was thinking of it as something that might be a connective vector kind of thing. Yeah, we, I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. Um, and and from a flotilla point of view, for me, working on mining the, you know, the, the structure of information out of Wikipedia is about as important as, as mining the structure out of the SDGs. 
yeah. I think it's probably more productive to come out of Wikipedia, frankly, because the SDG structure seems pretty disjointed and amorphous and variable. So it's it's also super like it's I mean, it's from the UN, right? Um, so if I'm in Washington sitting around looking at the world, you know, I'm going to say the SDGs are a way to organize, you know, our our efforts to make the world better more than I'm going to look at Wikipedia, for instance. So I, I um, uh, Vincent kind of called it marketing potential, right? It, it's it's a it's got a certain level of class and and import just because it's from the UN. Um, so I you know I I've heard enough. Th thanks, guys. I mean, we can whoever's. I think we can move on. I, I appreciate all of this. I didn't mean it, to thanks take for, time No, it's it's a good one, uh, Charles. Thanks for poking into it. And, and it just I kind encourage. of popped out. I didn't even think it would be a flotilla conversation, but it turned out, I think it, it was I, I think good. it is. I, I definitely think it is. And flotilla would be the place where we come together as sovereigns and go, yeah, I'm going to, you know, pull this into my sovereign. If I were, if I were Vincent, I would be all over trying to figure out how to, you know, help some subset of people um uh look at trove through an sdg lens you know so massive i don't know maybe maybe not you know if we get a contract with uh if if knowledge weavers gets a contract with um the un then yeah <clears throat> yeah i would love to continue oh. go ahead charles uh, go ahead vincent if, if lauren do you wanted to chime in at all just you've been super quiet no, nothing. Oh, okay. Okay. Go ahead, Vince. Um, yeah, I was going to say, um, actually, Pete, can you pass screen sharing for a second? Yes. And let me, let me uh, enable screen sharing. Oh, that'll work. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Okay, so um, what I was working on this weekend is, so I added some, on the Flotilla Friday's call for today, I added some topics to the, um, the event. And then when you click on a topic, so for example, education, it takes you to a topic page. And then this topic page basically has um, the different um, projects, events, communities, and also related topics to that topic. Um, so this is kind of how all the different topics are connected together, um, as well as the different like communities that care about education, the different events that talk about it and the different projects. Um, and so the, the kind of like first level thinking that I've been doing is like, okay, what are the main topics that this, this subtopic is talking about? And then what are the um, what is the type? So I have like domain, genre, SDGs, drawdown category. So I guess like the Wikipedia categories could be in here as another like type. I have like the 12 sectors. Um, so that's like a categorization system. And then you can also kind of connect it to other ones. So like education, I don't know if there's an SDG about, uh, about education. Quality education would be the SDG, right? And so then you could link them together. Um, but I think the, the more important thing to do, which I have, so yeah, now there's quality education Then you can go to that topic. Um, so I think the important thing is um, the relationship between the links. And so right now I have it as just like parent child related to but I think the next step is I want to add another kind of like field that's just like relate, like it's basically the relationship field. So you'll have like topic one relationship between those topics. And then you're able to do a lot more inference between like, okay, if I'm looking for stuff related to um, collaboration, then I get the S anything tagged with the SDG for like partnership for the goals. Um, and so that kind of like inferring topics by, by linking the topics together in a, in a, in a way that's a bit more semantic is something that, uh, hoping the next few weeks to 
to focus on now that I have that kind of like topic page where you can actually start to like visualize the relationships between the topics too. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's quite complex. So I would love help with that. And I don't know where, what the container is to do that, that work and to make that also something available for others to use. Um, so maybe it's a flotilla thing. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear what you guys think about it. Sounds beautiful. Yeah, that seems really exciting. Really <laughs> and, and, and also, you know, potentially interoperable. Um, I wonder if there's some uh, experiments we could come up with with using the, the, you know, the hundred million item <laughs> factor corpus of, of links to, to see how we could, you know, mutually filter on those. Hmm. Oh, that's fun. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna screen share the notes page again because I think because I think that's an easier way for people to look at it, <laughs> not because I want uh, to. I, I I wish we could have faces and and the screen share, but um, so and and then in doing that, um, uh, maybe together we can kind of remember the important. Uh, taxonomy tax taxonomization systems uh, so one of them is Dublin core another one is called probably Library of Congress um, UN SDGs is actually a very tiny tiny taxonomy um, does anybody know about Dublin core only just in name I think recently I don't I've, know if it was you I've got it posted or yeah, I've got it swapped out, so I don't remember any of the, any of it. But um, there are uh, <clears throat> there are a couple um, like massively large taxonomies. Um, so before we get too far, um, uh, before we get too far, there's. Uh, there's I, Dublin Core is maybe a structure. I think there's also some some actual taxonomy uh, that that goes along with it. And maybe I'm maybe I'm confusing this the the structure with the actual metadata. Um, like, uh, can I ask a contextual question? Mm -hmm. How does this relate to the little people, or even to the flotilla people? The which people? <laughs> that I mean, this these giant taxonomies. Like, it, are we already? They're they're sort of surrounding us in the world today, or or how do they? Yeah, they to they what are. We're doing? Yeah. Um, Can you ground uh, it somehow? I'm just trying to get so my mind let me, around. Uh, let me write down another connection before we get too far away from it. Um, uh, I think it's called Open Graph. Um, so already, I, I guess maybe little people is a weird way to say it, but, but a lot of folks, <laughs> um, unaware, basically, <laughs> well, you know, if at, at some point when, um, and, and even at the scale of, of Trover factor, um, I, you guys have heard me say this before, um, but I'll say it again. It's like, I, I'm pretty sure that things, once it starts getting complicated to the level of, and not very complicated, right? Something like Trove or something like Factor is actually a specialist tool, not uh, not a tool for the general public is my, my um, uh, conjecture. Um, so, and then, those are the easy ones, right? Those are should be easy for most people, um, even if we or we think they should be easy for most people or whatever. But I think most people most for easy for most people is Instagram. Um, and then eBay is a little bit too hard. And then, you know, <laughs> trophy factor a little bit too hard. Massive is like weirdly complex, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then, then we, you know, grow up from the baby stuff, baby taxonomy, taxonomization and ontology stuff that we do into like the grown up stuff, right? Library of Congress or Dublin Core or whatever. When you're at that level, um, uh, 
you're you've run into like specialist specialists um where uh it's the librarians and the information architects and the uh scientists so if i'm a scientist in the uk if i'm a scientist in the uk and i'm a scientist in argentina and i'm a scientist in uh, beijing um you know i'm working on I need a taxonomy to say this is the species I'm working on, or this is the area of science I'm working on, or something like that, right? So thank God, somebody else, I, you know, as a scientist in Argentina, I'm not going to care about like literally 99.99% of that whole ontology, but I do want to be able to say, that, you know, this is the thing I'm working on down to the level of, you know, this microgram of scientific knowledge. and my work, you know, I'm, and I'm spending my whole life on it, and I want to find the other three people in the world who are working on that microgram of science. So that's kind of where it comes into, into play. The other the other thing, um, let me, so Wikidata, by the way, Wikidata has got a bunch of this stuff baked into it, right? Um, uh, so does, I think, semantic semantic media wiki also has this you know has rdf structure behind it that will let you specify you know taxonomical stuff um i don't know that it has anything specific baked into it but you can because it's rdf you can go over and find the right ontology or taxonomy or whatever in rdf format and pour it into your semantic media wiki and then it automatically knows how to structure your information right Semantic Media Wiki is kind of an old old tool, but um, let me look up Open Graph real quick. Can I just ask a quick question? Um, yeah, go for it. Sorry. Um, so, is part of the the goal of Flotilla to figure out a taxonomy or figure out a method of implementing taxonomy that allows people from that general public through the knowledge worker through the uh kind of very specific scientist or researcher to build upon each other's work if if that makes sense i can clarify a bit further if um that makes sense um flotilla doesn't have a lot of goals i would say so okay. a, a different way to ask that is um factor has a goal of helping people find information um find uh, people who would usually be at the level of the sophistication of, of Pinterest or or um, uh, or Instagram. Um, so, and when I say sophistication, I do not mean intelligence or anything like that. Yeah. I mean actually just like um, practice in using um, specialist tools, sharp, 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 dangerous, and hard to use tools, right? Um, so it's like we would like more of the people who would usually be using Instagram to be able to use our tool to meet other people that are interesting to them in a in a more semantic way, in a more st structured, more interesting way. And that's going to help them and it's going to help other people, right? So then Factor has a goal or Massive has a goal or Trove has a goal. And Flotilla is kind of the, a, a room, uh, you know, in a, a, a persistent room, not just this call, uh, it's also the channel and, and, and other conversations. It's where we come together and say, hey, we have these shared goals um, and let's get a conversation going around, a roundtable conversation, right? Um, so that's more, more the fit, I think, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, so I, I can't find it. I think Open Graph is not what I'm thinking of. And then Google Knowledge Graph, Google bought somebody that was doing a bunch of this stuff that that is probably the thing that I'm working of, that the thing that I'm thinking of. Um, but there are some, uh, there are some massive tax taxonomy kinds of projects that drive things like when you search in Google for stuff, Google knows, Google has a bunch of relevance stuff that says, you know, uh, this Pete just did a bunch of searches about the UN. And so he's going to ask something about sustainable development. And uh, Google knows that I'm going, oh, I think probably he's thinking of this sustainable development goals, right? It even has the SARS stuff, right? If I, if I don't get sustainable, right? If it's like, I don't know, generative generative uh, goals or something like that. It's going to try to figure out what I'm, what I'm asking about. The way, uh, there it is, Freebase is the thing I'm looking for. Um, uh, uh, so, 
and and I think MetaWeb was the old company, and now it's now it's owned by Google, and so free is um, less meaningful than it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I'm not sure if anyone else has tried, but whenever I hear about like taxonomies and I try to Google them, I always have trouble actually finding like a simple text list of the different like terms of the taxonomy. It seems like they're like hidden somewhere inside some GitHub repo. And like, I, I don't know if that's the, the, just the my actual personal. The actual taxonomy elements or about taxonomies? Um, the actual elements. So like, so, like, and, and yeah, the reason, I look the reason for the that reference. is the reason for that is that they're 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 only useful for programmers, right? Um, so so this we should look at Freebase. Um, so I'm I'm old enough to remember this happening. Um, yes, Charles. I just have another contextual question, just to, to again to try to stay grounded here, because like looking through the Kiko Lab lens or even thinking, you know, on Vincent's behalf in terms of Trove, right? I mean, Vincent, you have lots of thoughts around taxonomy, obviously. Um, and then Michael, I, I'm curious, you know, it doesn't have to be now, but I'd love to hear just a tiny bit on even just, you, you mentioned these hundred million links um, and, you know, playing with Trove and whatever, and it came up out of talking about, you know, linking them more semantically. I'm just curious, like how, where, where you guys already got to and how maybe Kiko apps should start thinking in terms of our repository or, or associating with, with Trove and, you know, like, so how to link literally, I mean, bridge between these kind of giant standards and what we're actually doing with our baby taxonomies. So I hope that was useful. Let Thanks. me, let me keep going. If y'all could hold your answers. Um, uh, so I hope this looks familiar to you, that that the folks here are working on collective intelligence. We are doing it in Web three instead of Web two, and you know, structured role is semantic web. The semantic web was kind of a great idea that kind of was half good and half bad. So the reason I bring this stuff up um, is because there was a ton of work we did, um, the world did, you know, back in starting in two thousand you know, 2000 to 2010 or something like that. Um, so we, all of the work that we're about to do has been done before by smart people that left a lot of artifacts for us. So I hope <laughs> that we can leverage that. Um, and maybe actually even better is to try to figure out where this, you know, was this too early? Um, uh, was this, you know, too ambitious? Uh, semantic web, I know, was it, it bit off too much structure, kind of. I know that's part of the reason it, it, it didn't go as far as it could have. Um, and then to answer Charles's question, there are, and maybe Vincent's question too, um, uh, music brains or something like it is, uh, is the thing that helps you when Spotify is playing songs for you, it helps you find the, the next song that you would like. Um, when you ask Alexa, you know, uh, Alexa, um, we did this yesterday. Um, uh, Alexa, what was the movie that blah, blah, blah star, you know, that it was something about, um, you know, it was a science fiction movie and this, this random star was in it. You know, what, what was that? What was the green screen, you know, the actor who did the green screen stuff in, you know, um, uh, it, it uses a big massive, you know, graph database of stuff. Another one, another thing is actually psych. Uh, there used to be a thing called open psych and then they closed it. It was psych and then it was open psych for a little while and they had an open source version and then they closed it again. Psych is a little bit fancier than a taxonomy. It actually has understanding links. Um, it, it understands that um, a street is a dangerous place for, for a human to stand. And, you know, it, there's a bunch of like weird linkages that it has about the world and, and, and real world interactions between entities, entities and stuff in the world. So these are the things that are the old style take at AI. Um, and, and they know a lot. There's, there's systems that know a lot. Um, 
so then Vincent, the, the reason that you don't see those text taxonomy elements living out in textiles is because they're all baked into they're they're probably um, triple stores or you know fancier data data structures that don't make it into text or even CSV. And then the only people who are interested in are the, the folks around this table who are going, okay, I need to organize a hundred million links or a billion links um, by some you know, uh, by a set of a thousand taxonomies and how do I do that, right? It's like you go, you you go find that in the GitHub. You don't find it mm. lying around. Yeah, because I, I was, I mean, I guess like a few years ago, I was like, well, I'm inventing my own taxonomy system. Shouldn't I just like see what's out there? And then I'd like try to see what's out there. And I could like barely find any of them. Like yep. it was so, like I wanted to just import a taxonomy system into Airtable as a CSV and <laughs> just start to, to tag things with it and that was like Im almost impossible for me to find there you know it's a it's a big hairy data structure um run by data scientists you know m you know managed managed and created and developed and stuff by data scientists so you have to go find a data scientist and then ask them mm. you know yo um i have 100 billion things i want to taxonomize how do you how do i do that i know that somebody's done it before and then you would yeah. get a better explanation of the one that I just did. Part of what Charles is saying is like, so like part of what Trove wants to do is, is make it more visible. Like I, I want to expose the taxonomy. So when you're filtering and searching, like you understand how the algorithm works if you want to, um, which is kind of like that topic page. Like you can like see the related topics and how they're related, right? Like YouTube doesn't, show you how they recommend videos to you but wouldn't be interesting if they did so that's a kind of yeah um you should as, as a product manager you should ask some some target audience members you know ask ask them questions that would get them to answer give you an answer like yeah i do you know i, I wish there was some way that i understood you know how it relates things or things like that my, my guess is that most civilians really don't care or really can't even understand the idea of, of taxonomy and ontology and all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a uh, ontology and taxonomy is something that a few of us learn in high school, a few of us kind of start to learn in high school. And then, you know, when you, when you need to do some work as a scientist, lo loosely named, um, uh, you know, some kind of uh, research, you go, okay, now I've got a million things i can't find anything unless i organize this how do i organize it right um having said all yeah. that one of my favorite things when I, I used to sneak into the university library when i was a high school kid um and then one of my favorite things was literally in those days they had these big books that you would flop flop open and it was just all the library of congress uh terms you know it's like i would just flip through that and just fascinated by like the ways that you could um, set up, you know, set up information. That sounds so Pete. <laughs> yeah. um, my favorite book in the university library, by the way, is um, Rand Corporation in the early 60s made a book of a million random digits. Um, and I, I love that because it's like, wow, a million digits. And wow, they're random. Well, it's from the random corporation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, My favorite book was the really big six inch dictionary. Yeah. You could just open it anywhere and learn a bunch of new words. It was so cool. The, the touchstone is when you're trying to look up something in the dictionary, did you get to the word that you were looking for or did you get completely distracted by the time you were? <laughs> I got completely distracted and had to remind myself that I needed to go back and look for the word. <laughs> I, I could never even remember what the word was after about 20 seconds. <laughs> old people and their stories, man. Um, not that you're old, Judy, but if I certainly only, Well, I, I accept the definition. <laughs> if only they'd had a way to monetize their, uh, their distraction. And, and use of, of your attention the way we do now. Yeah. It's a, a really good observation, yes. I don't know. What I loved most about the library was one book led me to another. I'd get a book and I'd start doing something and then I'd find something in it that was interesting and then I'd go look for another book that expanded on the interesting thing. 
and this was all at like the ages of eight to 10. And the librarians were highly amused because this small person would end up with 10 books or 15 books on a table. And they were afraid I wouldn't put them back right. So they insisted on doing it. But eventually they taught me to a decimal so I could put them back where they belonged because they didn't want to have to. <laughs> Michael, did you get to answer or do you want to answer Charles's question? How, how does, you know, what, what does Factor think of a little bit of taxonomy? And um, We had done actually, um, we, we had a, a data scientist who was on staff for a while um, doing a lot of topic model stuff because we we've always been more focused on on user generated um, information than imposing um, structure, and we just kind of backed off on that. Um, it's something that we're really interested in, um, and yeah, I. And, and you know what this relates to something that you were saying about the kind of level of difficulty. Um, I would say, <clears throat> you know, in the in the flow flotilla universe, we're probably aspiring lowest. Um, you know, we want people to be able to use it for whatever they want, but we're probably the most oriented toward the most unsophisticated users. Um, so I just I just throw that out there. Yeah, that's that's helpful. We can be the gateway drug. That would be awesome. And and actually that the, the, another cool thing in Flotilla whenever we talk about interoperability and you know, it's like, thank goodness somebody else is like, you know, I whenever Vincent and I are talking about um, matching up trove and and massive and getting data to flow between them it's like you know thank goodness somebody's doing trove because it's completely different than massive and you know a bunch of people need trove to get to massive that's that's awesome same thing with yeah. factor so thank you for yeah. being the the accessible <laughs> part of flotil i guess charles did that kind of did I, you get some answers for what your question thanks yeah totally no it's good um lauren since you were just by the screen and before you, you disappeared, I don't know if you've been super quiet. I'm, I'm just curious, maybe in terms of the taxonomy stuff, how you see from your side and Kiko Lab and I don't know, there's a bunch there, but do you like saying anything? Uh, yeah, I've had my hand up for like half an hour. Um, oh, I didn't see. I apologize. Excuse me. Uh, one, I just want to say, you probably already know this, this is probably stupid, but um, Yuri has this whole thing on Wikidata and his interoperability stuff. You probably already know about that, so. Um, kind right? of, yeah, kind of. You might want to talk to him about him. Um, it's a whole thing. And um, what else? Yeah, I mean, regarding trove and searching, it just, uh, it would be so nice if we could search using several taxonomies. Like if we wanted to search through it with the SDGs, we could do it that way, but also another one that we like better. I just think that having more than one would be great. How, how do you feel about knowing what the, like what Vincent said, exposing the taxonomy. About what? Um, so along with being able to choose a taxonomy, hi, mm -hmm. I think in terms of SVG or I think in terms of Wikipedia, how about something that helps you understand what that taxonomy is? Maybe I don't know about the SVGs and I'm starting to notice that every time I click on a page, you know, it says it's got a little short code for an SDG and I click on that and it explains to me what all the SDGs are and then I would go oh wow I get how this is organized now and it turns out I'm not quite interested in whatever food is but I'm interested in the water thing which is right next door yeah I mean I think it would be um pretty awesome if people could just um kind of 
make up their own taxonomies and start using those and or use uh, use their buddies that that they know they know and trust right and but if they're involved with also in, in co-evolving yeah. I mean, I think that I think that people are like, oh no, too, like too many taxonomies. It's too complicated. But I think like over time, AI could kind of sort some of those out. Yep. Um, but I think that it would just create, it would just uh, have a, you could have an innovation explosion that way, and then you'd have emergent taxonomies that um, gained followers. Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, I kind of like you're following a taxonomy instead of a person. Yeah. I was having a little thought because um, starting to set up some some stuff more in um, in the DAO in the crypto space. Just not really too much, but um, just seeing all these different blockchains and different um, like connecting to your wallet and. Just maybe this is useful and maybe totally unrelated, but it's like a different chain, potentially. And then it comes to the question of you know how how and where and when do they connect? But um, I don't know. It's like a frequency, frequency, wavelength, uh, a, diff a different chain in a way. I don't know. Just occurred to me. Um, Phil, you had your hand up, but now you don't. Sorry, I was muted there. One thing I find kind of interesting, if it will be possible, is kind of how you have metadata on different content, being able to use the taxonomy as a filter. So people can choose which taxonomy they're using when classifying different content. Um, yep. Secondarily, it would be interesting to, as Michael said, we're a bit more general, but to have a, a taxonomy structure that if we shared with Trove, for instance, that we could be kind of the less the less dialed, like sorry, uh, the less um, dialed in. So we have like the top level, maybe two or three levels down, and then once Probe can use that to pull in and classify further. Um, so that's just an, one way I could see us working interoperably. Uh, thanks. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I go ahead. I, I was just gonna say I I apologize, Lauren, for having. I, I had the display of people set up so that I couldn't see everybody. And now I've switched it, so now I can see everybody and that people have hands up. Vincent. So, yeah, in terms of, I guess, how do you guys have things right now in, um, in Factor? Is it just ta like hashtags, tags? Uh, and then the collections are like, I guess, like folders, but those could be something like my favorite books, or it could be like something that actually um, is a higher level tag, I'm assuming. Is that right? Yeah. So right now we have a base level kind of, you can tag each link or each post uh, with how you choose. Um, you can also set up folders on those. So then you can kind of automatically select anything with this tag and then add it to this folder and then tag again as kind of a second level. Um, and then we have a kind of overarching filter set that if you want to find information from those 100 million links or whatever it is, you can have a, a Boolean set of filters that kind of dive down. So you can say, I want anything in biotech uh, within the me medicine field or kind of as you go down. Um, and dive down that way. And that's one way to create a group or you can do it manually uh, through tagging. We're working on implementing geotagging, kind of time tagging, um, but that's uh, in the pipeline right now. Yeah, okay, that cool. so, so the biotechnology, is that something a user tags it with or do you guys look and see, oh, there's a hundred tags, one of them is COVID and we're gonna connect COVID to biotech so people can search biotech and then find this thing that someone tagged related to COVID. Um, we, we don't, we don't do any, we've, as I was saying, we were doing um, some topic modeling to, you know, 
use machine learning to 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 do some of that work, but we're not right now. And and it is um, it is just based on on the tagging that people actually do. We're not we're, we're not relating it. I mean, we think that'd be great. Um, yeah, not doing that right now. Yeah, and the, the highest level grouping we have right now is you can pick your sources, which are RSS feeds, and we have some groupings of sources that cover specific topics. Um, but then you can kind of refine from within that source of information what you want of that and tag it how you choose. Okay, cool. Got it, got it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it would be cool to kind of see if there is some like linking. So I've started to do linking between the different tags. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see how much of an overlap it is there is with the tags that you guys have and like, you know, then you might be able to um, kind of compare the two data sets and be like, okay, these like these a thousand tags are in Trove and they're linked in this way. And then you could kind of import those links in a way. Um, yeah, um, we've actually, one thing we've tried to do is make it so that every kind of, everything on factor can be tagged. So whether it's a link or a person or a group or a container for links that can all be tagged so that you can kind of go beyond the, just a link, but people like basically try to link everything and through that tag. Sorry. Yeah, we should, we should connect about this and, and, and talk about it. I mean, I'm happy to talk about it here, but I would love to talk about it uh, more, more offline too. And I'd like to get onto another topic. Um, uh, which has some relationship, actually, interestingly enough, but uh, uh, something something probably all of us have wanted for a while. Um, uh, it, it came up and kind of crystallized in an interesting way in, in yesterday's call uh, with Lionsburg. And I think Jerry will get that video up at some point. And it's not, you know, we don't need need it, but um, it was an interesting discussion. Some interesting things came up. There's um, uh, the, the question was kind of generally like, so if I'm OGM and I know a little bit about some of the organizations around me, um, Flotilla and Trove and Factor and Massive, who are they? What are they doing? What's going on with them, right? So in thinking about this, um, I, I've been thinking about the kind of the same question for a while. Um, I've, I've been trying to draw a map of what I call the plex, right? All the all the different sovereigns in it, and and then all the different individuals. And then with individuals, I've got this privacy filter, so you don't want them to show up on on maps usually when you publish a map. But um, uh, and obviously. Vincent has got met, starting to have metadata about uh, any organization that's in Trove. What if we had something that was kind of like a slash now page? Does everybody know what a slash now page is? Um, uh, I, I put two links here. The, the idea is, you know, well, let me just real quick go over Derek Sievers. I think he's the person who started the idea. Um, He's like, people always ask me what's going on. And so now I have, uh, you know, what are you doing right now? And it's like, well, I'll just put that on a web page. <laughs> so this was a movement that started here. Um, uh, so Jerry has a now page, a bunch of other people have a now page. Uh, now, now, now .com is a directory of people who have websites who have now pages. Um, uh, and so that's the good news. The bad news is that each of these now pages is completely unstructured and it's whatever the person wants it to be. And um, and I think mostly they're not maintained as well as they could be um, because you know it's built into your your blog or your whatever. Um, so uh, So there's a whole bunch of structural problems with the now page, but anyway, you get the idea. You know, what if, what if Massive had a page, and then I'm going to go to another one, FAC Entity Member Relationship. That's this weird, um, weird name for political reasons. Um, but this is kind of a list of. Um, 
I, I deserve that. I love that where you're going with this, by the way, Pete. This is great. I really don't get why that broke, actually. I mean, I... Oh, well. Um, uh, so this was something that I kind of asked OGM uh, about once, um, and I would add to it a little bit, you know, but what's your, what's your mission? What's your vision? What are some of your values? Um, when you have members and, and actually maybe partner organizations and stuff like that, you know, um, how do you relate to them? And um, maybe even how do you make decisions? Um, uh, things that aren't on this list, uh, you know, what's your, what's your business model? What's your income? What's your ownership? Who owns you? Um, or who doesn't own you, that kind of stuff. Um, so it seems like it seems like on the one hand, that would be easy to kind of list up. And then if I think about it too much longer, it's like everyone's going to have kind of different answers to it. But I would really love to have uh, like a JSON or a YAML page um, for organizations in the in the Plex here that says, you know, here's here's Kika Lab and what we do, and here's OGM and what we do, and here's Massive and what we do, right? And I think we could do that. Um, and I think you would have to flatten the information a little bit to, to fit it into whatever taxonomy we would come up with to do that. But I'm, I, even then, it would be super valuable, right? So then murmurations, I don't know if I, I meant to add them in here. Murmurations has a start on, um, on how you kind of represent the structure of, you know, you can lay out the structure. They, they have some work on how the structure gets laid out. And they started to have some work on also just the code for aggregating a bunch of that stuff off of websites. I don't know how far along that is or, but you know, it's, they've certainly got at least inspirational stuff that we would look at. Um, and, and as well, there's also micro formats um, back from the olden days and, you know, things like RSS and stuff like that. Vincent. So, 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 um, for the first time in a while, um, I was having a conversation with uh, Wendy Clean and um, her, um, maybe she can come to the next Latilla, hopefully. Um, her Everyone's Wisdom platform that she had been, you know, scheming and thinking about for years and, and starting to build now. Um, kind of took a, a slightly different approach from Trove um, where how she put it, it's like everyone's perspective is like looking from the top of a tree or the mast of a sailboat and and then kind of spreads out from there. So like imagine like, you know, you're the center of your own mind map of the way you're related to the other things in the world. Yep. And so we were talking about um, the like three I think there's three levels of complexity of doing this sort of like relationship mapping. And um, she actually, we went to like the third one and I, for the first time was like, okay, this is actually hurting my brain, which, which is a, a first, um, but so the three <laughs> levels. <laughs> so the first level is like, um, is centralized and connected. Right. And so that's like, we're going to have one mind map in, for example, let, like, okay, let's say we took all of the um, organizations in Trove and then each organization could basically say how they're related to other organizations. And then you have, have one mind map that shows all of the organizations and how they're all connected. And it's, you know, basically showing like there's like one source of, of truth more or less. Then that's like, that's easy. And it also is not going to be as accurate because it's not going to keep up with how things change and the different kind of perspectives. So the second one is um, decentralized, but not connected. So each organization could have their own map with them at the center and then showing how they're connected to everything else. It'll be a bit more accurate it'll be a bit easier for each organization to change it and update it over time. Um, but those maps will not be hyper connected because that's another level of complexity. Um, and so then the third level of complexity, which is like, <laughs> well, we were talking about trying to do this in Trove and I was like, no, please, let's not talk about it now, was um, 
decentralized and connected. So like each person could have their own perspective of the map. The maps are all controlled by every individual. Uh, individuals can like suggest connections and then it becomes like almost like Wikipedia where you can like upvote or downvote connections. And so you have this hyper decentralized, but also hyper connected, taking into consideration all the different perspectives to create like a giant mind map, but then also smaller maps if you like zoom into any one organization and you can see kind of more in detail. And so from a technical perspective, that's pretty, yeah, the, the last part is, is a lot. Um, but I think the first and the second steps are quite easy to even like do that now. Like we could probably spend next flotilla call like a half hour, just like doing step one or two. I think step three is really hard though. Um, that's awesome. Wow. Thank you. Uh, and, and there's Sharing a funny your thing, brain pain. <laughs> uh, in a, in a stewards call last week or something like that. I, I said it the same way. Here's the view from my my mast in the flotilla. Um, there's uh, I was I was looking at there's something called hyperbolic trees, um, and uh, Obsidian actually has a nice hyperbolic tree graph um, visualizer, which I'm trying to find. Um, I would also mention that that um, True.net and, and JLink are doing some things related to that on, on the formal side, um, but they're, they're involved with the CTA. We might want to, um, so, you know, there's some connection there to murmurations. Um, we might wanna look at what they're doing and, and possibly pull them in. Um, and Jay what? Uh, J link, it's J L I N C. Um, hold on. It's dot. Uh, J L I N C dot com. Um, and then also true.net related. Awesome, thank you. Uh, this is the Obsidian plugin that does the hyperbolic graph visualization. It's pretty cool. So it takes all your, all your nodes and this is actually not yet. This is the simple graph visualizer that comes with Obsidian over here. Um, but uh, Juggle has got, um, uh, you can have shapes for different, different tags um, and uh, named edges. Uh, and it's got a couple different views, um, kind of like the regular force director uh, one and then a, uh, uh, what they call a circle, which is basically a, a hyperbolic graph. And, Two more that I think are that aren't that interesting. Um, so when you when you're starting to look at connections between things, um, Juggle is actually really nice. Uh, and I forget, I think I forget if he's based it on some other code or not. Um, so this actually totally relates to the uh, quite nascent emergent mappers guild or map yep. kind of stuff. Yep, definitely. So the one, the thing with, with this is how does juggle treat a, okay. So in obsidian, each obsidian is its own, has its own graph, right? Mm. Um, so that it makes sense. It's like, okay, we're creating a new, uh, you know, a new folder of pages. We're going to create a graph and then we're going to connect the different things in this graph. Um, I feel like the massive wiki that in five years will have like a bunch of wikis all connected together, then you need to figure out how those graphs connect together. I guess, I guess yeah. I'm saying, so for Trove, like each organization like have their own graph, 
Yep. But then there's also the graph of all of them together. And those are like two different levels of complexity. I wonder if Juggler, this can do that other level of complexity. No, no, I can't. I mean, I the even I, I started actually, the first thing I did with this uh, to play with it was make it, I made a list of all the sovereigns. Um, uh, actually, I have this list. Uh, I, I just put in the top level of this, not the next, the next level down. So just the top level here. Um, and then you make as pages. So each of these was a page and then you make links between them and then you've got your graph. Um, so I did that. <laughs> I did that in my, you know, my, my diary, um, wiki, uh, which is, I don't know, a thousand pages or something like that. And so all I, it, it, you know, it's complete mess. So I was like, okay, the next time I try this, I'm going to start with a completely new wiki. So then I can have just the sovereign graph. And then you, you're, you're totally right, Vincent, you need a way to, you know, zoom out of, um, it's almost like street view on, on Google, you need a way to zoom out of that into the next, you know, the next up, level up, the next graph up, and then zoom back in, right? So right and and what you would ideally want is like if each organization has a a photo and a description and other like the vision like the stuff you showed in like the now page right like and if i so if i tag a if i add you know kiko lab on one of my maps i don't want to have to re-enter that information i just want it to yep. pull yep. it all in So uh, maybe Pete, you could um, pull up open, uh, no, sorry, graphcommons.com. Yep. Because this is actually another, is it? another one that I would say would be probably even better to play with for Flotilla because uh, you can create a graph and you could do it visual. Um, you could just actually like connect things together by just drawing a line. And then it also is accessible by API or you can import a CSV. Um, yeah, it, it's funny how um, it's funny how bare bones uh, graph visualization is still, and there aren't many tools that do it well. So Graph Commons looks pretty good. Yeah, I really, I, I'm starting to really like this tool, and you can create a map with an, with the API, or you can edit it, or yeah, post to it, which is really cool. There was a. Um, uh, just yes yesterday, I bumped into, let me see if I can find it again. I'm super excited, by the way. This is great. <laughs> I'm, this is good. Uh, so there's something called uh, some app. I think they build on Kumu, I believe. Something uh, like that. They export to Kumu and they also export to Graph Commons now. I guess this is the, the blog post about cool. this. It's been actually a few years since I really checked them out. I'm kind of vaguely connected with them. Yeah. So I, th I thought it was, so, so I, I don't know much about their tool yet. Um, uh, they do maps, but then they export to Kumu and, and Graph Commons. And so it's interesting they, that those are the they also do events and kind of uh, t trainings and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's their their core work. Um, and really if you want to look at it, uh, June Holly. Yeah, June Holly is, is involved. I think in Ben Roberts and now what? All that stuff was uh, some app as well. The giant um, now what network map. Is that the right way to spell it? It doesn't look right. Where? Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, what you're looking at. It doesn't look yeah, right. Yeah, it's UI. Right. Uh, That's correct. Yeah. Not capitalized. It doesn't look right. There's tons, by the way. You might, you know, since you have it up, why don't you just poke in on um, networkweaver.com? It's not a terrible digression because she has a lot of like stuff that she gives away. Tons of resources, like constantly coming so it's really good to know about 
I, yeah, I, June I Holly just... actually got me a consulting gig. She's awesome, and we haven't even met. <laughs> oh, that's great. So you were in touch with her. We've been trying to get a hold of her. It's been a while, but, but Lauren and I know her. And I go back she, further. Yeah. She, she literally reached out to me and then was like, hey, there's someone you should talk to. And then, like, we didn't actually talk, but she literally got me, like, yeah, a consulting gig by just making a connection. And she doesn't even know me. Uh, so... Yeah, that's all I have to say about June. It's, she kind of has this like um, amazing intuition. She like made this connection without even knowing me uh, on LinkedIn. So yeah, it was kind of cool. That's beautiful. Uh, that's that's great news. Cool. She's pretty special. I think Lauren and I are definitely fans and we want to get, get stuff going with her more. Anyway, just FYI, there's like stuff there. It's good to get the newsletter. She's pretty prolific, hard to keep up with, but but um, also just in the in the resources and research department, there's a lot of stuff there. Um, I'm super excited. This is the you know last couple of days I've been thinking about this organizational metadata slash now page slash vision page or whatever slash about us page. Um, so. I was, I'm, I'm super excited to actually do some of the, the just the, the JSON schema for that. Um, but maybe that's not today. Uh, and maybe we should talk a little bit about the commons, generative commons and the Monday. Um, wow. Great. I'm wondering if you can maybe kill the screen share. Yep. For a moment. Um, I just want to see who else is here. And Judy, if, if, with respect, if, if, if you might um, take a prompt at the inception of the term and just sort of how you're seeing it from your vantage point, uh, is that a fair question? <laughs> <laughs> well, it should be because I should be thinking about it pretty regularly. I guess my thought is that we need to be clear about what we mean by generative commons. And, and what I mean about it is the framing of a specific generative intent and the sharing of it in as many ways as possible in a commons vector. So if we have a, a commons that's open to people and there are many examples of commons, but most of them are not generative and there are certain activities that are generative that are focused, but they aren't really shared in a commons. And that's not very articulate, but I guess to me, a generative commons is a place where all of the participants share their generative activities and their thoughts and their wisdom. And that thought and wisdom process is what allows the commons to grow with affiliation of other individuals with similar thoughts and wisdom and adding new wisdom or new vectors. So it quickly becomes very snarly, snarky and dendritic, but that's what the commons would be. And the, the challenge I think for Flotilla or the group working on generative commons is how is that then approachable to people? How do people find the commons, first of all, that they can do if we label it and make a website or a wiki, but how do they engage with the commons? What is the mechanism for them to share generative ideas, to talk about what they're doing, to invite others to participate in those areas? Thanks, Judy. So super quickly, I think Lauren is about to serve dinner. Is it possible you can chime in for 30 seconds? Maybe, I, your hands are literally full, but I know you're gonna go soon. And I wanna just hear from you, uh, for everybody, what's, what's cooking for Monday, anything at all, or what's your thinking? I know it's just a tall order, but this whole Sovereigns thing, and there's a bunch of pieces all moving around, right? Yeah, there are a lot of pieces moving around. <laughs> so what about Monday? I mean, since it was ref we're inviting everyone and we're trying to see you, Vincent. All right. Yeah. Take, see you soon. Anyway, um, well, I can just start by saying, you know, it's multilingual for the first time. So we're really um, trying to expand the, the, the offering of the Kiko Lab experience, let's say, but, but also, you know, up the level in terms of diversity of voices. Um, and how we're, you know, holding the space. But Lauren, I know you're gonna have to go really soon, so I'd love to hear from you. No, I'm just, um, yeah, so I'm 
trying to offer breakouts in four different languages, but five because English is one. And, um, you know, because it wasn't complex enough before. <laughs> well, I, I think that's a great idea, though, Lauren, to be able to break out into language clusters would be really rich. And to make it clear to people in the newsletter soon to come out that the, the template for this would be to attempt to have breakout rooms that are language specific to allow richer discourse. Right. So I just decided decided for Monday to actually like hire some super translators who speak at least four different languages to um, be in each room. And I need them to act like I can write specific directions, but no one will read them. And so mm -hmm. I just needed people who will actually read the directions and, um, you know, follow them and help other people through the directions. Um, and then so I planned it so that we're going to do maybe like our breakouts in different languages. And then I think what I'm, I think what I'm going to have to do, uh, um, to do, I think what I'm going to do is then have all the, the super multilingual people who speak at least three languages in uh, a room together, moving post-its around on a board and the post-its will be in the original language and they'll use them to find patterns and to see i guess my multilingual strategy is to see what ideas are universal and then to see which languages have untranslatable uh ideas that need that we need um to do some translation for, to, we might actually have to make up some contact um, um, concepts or bring those concepts into the other languages. So it's an assessment basically of the memes that are that are existing and which of the memes do we have to adopt in English? Because it might not, it's an, it, a lot of times it's not a matter of just translation. Um, like from, because there, if there are no, words that exist in another language, you have to talk about the concept and then make up terms for it. So that's kind of what the sense making exercise is about. So it's kind of a step up from what we normally do. That but sounds great, Lauren. Are there, are there, if there's a sheet that you're going to use for the workout rooms, the breakout rooms, it would help me in terms of my introduction to see what that is. Yeah, I'm designing the Miro board and I don't know. Um, Michael, do you have this? You have design experience, right? Because I would I, I think I could have some kind of UX sort of help in just um, color coding things and make and making sure because um, I have, you know, things in my mind, which I think are easy. And then they like other people look at them and they're like, we don't understand this at all. And so I'm trying to make it so that it's intuitive. Um, it's an intuitive enough design that people can uh, flow through it and understand it. I'd be I'd be glad to take a look. I'm traveling a lot between now and Monday, so I'm I'm not going to be able to do much. But I'm I'm happy to to be a set of eyes and, and give you feedback. Great. Thanks. Are you around on the on Monday, by the way? What's that? Are you around during the session? I was just curious if you. Oh yeah, I was I was planning on it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. it's sort of an all hands on deck time because it's super difficult. Yes. <laughs> Do you want me to frame a variety of things the commons might be and then invite other things from the groups or? Um... Well, we already generated the question. So I've done a flyer in um, almost all the languages. OK, can and you so... send me the English one so that I can have it when I write my my little spiel. Oh, I can send it yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. That would be great, Charles. I'll just post it right now too in the chat. Here we go. Cool. I think I put it in the generative comments channel on Mattermost actually already. Okay. Yeah, so these were kind of like the five most important questions to Kiko Lab. Which were uh 
How do we resolve disputes within and between our organizations? How do we build formal bridges between our knowledge and data? How do we identify and dismantle unhealthy group patterns? How do we work across language and cultural boundaries? How do we connect more effectively with marginalized people? And how do we identify emerging business models? Okay, great, thanks. I'll look in generative commons, Charles, if you already put it there, but thank you. That it, sounds really good, Lauren, they're great questions. I don't see it, Charles. It was, it was shared in the generative commons channel uh, this week, I don't know. It's not very far up, it's, I think it's there. Ah, uh, yeah, gotcha. I think there's an updated one with the with the with the Bitly link for the newsletter, but basically it's the same. Um, I'm not seeing anything in the in the chat. Are we in the Mattermost chat or are we in the Mattermost, the Mattermost. Chat? Mattermost okay. chat? Okay. You can tag Judy, maybe Pete. That's okay. I'll I can find it. I just was. It's uh, it's from oh. Wednesday. Um, okay. Great. Oh, and well, we site, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say it looks like uh, this. So here's the here's the flyer. And it, it looks like Pete, actually, right? <laughs> here it is in. Uh, in the right, channel. I did I did see that. Thank Simone you, Mona Lisa. Um, yeah. I will add that um, Lauren did run this back past Michelle Bowens and he, he, he thought it was um, seemed, seemed uh, I don't know what he said exactly, I wasn't there, but but it has this kind of he stamp of- because He's in Thailand, which is a very bad time for him, but he gave me some recommendations of other people to invite. Cool. Um, Craig, Craig Dunn is somebody from Thailand who comes on fairly often that's an interesting thinker and in, very interested in commons. I, I'm pretty sure he's on your mailing list, but he'd be someone that would be great to have in one of the rooms because he really works with commons. I doubt he'll, it's five hours uh, later, which is two o'clock in the morning for him. I doubt he'll be there. Okay. Yeah, it's tough. He's been up at pretty strange hours though, previously on All conversation right. with me. So I wouldn't oh. rule out if he's, interested in the topic <laughs> bring him in extend an invite you know he's all we, we like the guy we haven't hung out with him enough so, yeah. yeah i i um was there something else on the agenda or do we have um any other no not really things on that yeah maybe, maybe Did that seem to fit with uh fit enough in terms of the frame of flotilla and what uh, what, what part Oh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. We didn't really talk so much about, um, actually, you kind of, I, here's, here's maybe another one, one more piece to, to try to fill in or get clarity, because um, I wasn't on either the um, stewards calls. Uh, it, maybe I just missed one. And then the Lionsburg call and, and sort of how that relates to it's just a bigger topic. But if there's any kind of recap in, 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 in terms of making that picture coherent somehow with regard to sovereignty and commons? Uh, and sovereignty or, or sovereign sovereigns? So, sovereignty in the sense of sovereigns is what I'm, I'm being playful, but yeah. Um, I don't know, the, the, the Lionsburg call, I can kind of remember because it was yeah. recent. Um, it, was, it was fairly operational actually, just, you know, um, how, how's it going? How are, how are uh, OGM and Lionsburg kind of proceeding? And, you know, uh, Judy was wondering if all the sovereigns kind of knew, you know, what to do or what they were doing, which got us to the question of how, do, how can we even tell, uh, which got me onto the, the thing exactly. about the now page. Well, I, I, I think that the, the sense is that, you know, Lionsburg is happy to have one thing up and running. Um, they're open to more things being up and running, but the ball's in the court of individuals who would choose to affiliate because there's some reason to do so. And it's perfectly okay if they choose not to affiliate because that works better for them. So I think it's, it's, a, it's an, a, a work in progress. And there's still, I, I sense a, a little bit of tension between 
to what extent are the sovereigns coming in under the existing first OGM bootstrap thing as sort of like that can be a holding place for things for them to, to receive monies or to do things or the extent to which they come in wholly independently with Lionsburg. And I think that's kind of whatever works for whichever sovereign group is involved. And they may choose not to come in at all because they're already affiliating with some other cluster of sovereigns in some different way. Got it. So, Thanks, it's helpful. There's, there's also is the there... phases too. That there's a, you know, a, a few sovereigns fit into that, that early tranche. And then the next ones are a later phase. Mm -hmm. Is there a regular call still on Thursdays at this point with Jordan or what's going on there? Yes. Um, we, we talked about whether or not there should be a continuing call because it, it you know, it kind of changes. Um, Jordan felt pretty strongly, actually suggested pretty strongly that um, if, if there wasn't a regular um, heartbeat, you know, between kind of the sovereigns and, and Lionsburg, uh, there, there wouldn't be much communication at all. So he, he wanted the, the, the mindfulness I, I, of I coming he, together every week. Yeah, I think he feels like he would lose touch with what's going on. Um, and okay. helpful for not, him. not from a sense of surveillance it's just like he's he's busy and has a bunch of stuff going on so right. he, he's eager to have you know some a touch point a, a, a regular touch point we talked Good about enough. maybe two weeks or one week i fell fell back to one week and that's fine for now so at the same time though yeah same time Good to know. And the stewards have been expanding. Maybe have any quick words on all that? I don't. The, there isn't. As far as I know, there isn't really stewards right now. We There's a channel, of, and I saw evidence in a channel, and then a bunch of people are going to these calls, and I wasn't there, so I was just curious. <laughs> I don't think there were that many people on that call. No, oh, okay. and I think we're. We're uncertain what our role is because we want the sovereigns to be sovereigns. So then they don't really need stewards over the, the sovereigns in a sense. So I, I feel like stewards is a word that we, we're trying to figure out an alternative word for perhaps. Um, Jerry, Jerry still says stewards, uh, uh, steward owned a lot, steward ownership, which I don't hmm. get. I've noticed that, yeah. And I really, hate, I really it. Yeah. specifically hate steward ownership. It's sort of antithetical in content. I agree. <laughs> um, so on the call, I did the call is up on on the channel. So there are there are you know Klaus is there, Scott was there, uh, Scott popped up, Craig was there, Lorelai was there, and Jack was there. So these are people that are have almost never been there, mostly with some exception. Yeah, it, it was Tuesday call. What's that? Tuesday call, yeah. Um, so that was was sort of a repurposed stewards. It w it wasn't really a stewards. It's call. not the stewards call, and and it was kind of a coincidence that everybody showed up. It wasn't, you know. Yeah, it wasn't we had a, decided a in the, in the previous week we had decided that this time slot might be useful, but we weren't sure for what. So we would leave the slot there, sort of with the agenda TBD and a different group of people showed up and it was an interesting conversation um but i don't actually think... jerry, jerry teed it up to be a discussion of guilds um how, how how to structure guilds and what you know so that was the call it was a a ogm working session uh, about guilds um hosted in the stewards channel which is where i saw everything about it yeah it, it hasn't been renamed and it's kind of interesting he you know even on youtube he called it the stewards call and he said thank you for a great call this morning stewards so the you know the the name is still there but it's not it's not the same thing and the output of that by the way um uh i think maybe we heard this in the thursday call or maybe it was just Maybe it was me and Phil, actually, now that I think about it, um, and Jerry. Uh, but um, guilds is a rich and generative word, and it's also got a fair amount of baggage. And so I, was, I, I wasn't I was on that whole call, but um, it Jerry ended up in a place where he's like, yeah, maybe guilds is not the right word, um, you know, even though it's maybe a good concept. Yeah. Like Lorelei and I both felt it was a really negatively charged word in terms of hierarchical yeah. and historical and a bunch of other things that are 
not sort of like knowledge hubs. Yep. So I think the term will change. <laughs> um, and I, I think that's part of the evolution of where we are now. You know, stewards is too oversighty for what we would want any kind of group of people to be. Right now, the group of people is just people kicking around ideas of different dimensions of what OGM might become and what areas would be rich in development and how do we help people. I think we're, we're looking more at how do we onboard people? How do we, how do we let people know that it's there and what kind of information do we want from a new sovereign and that kind of thing? Um, also in OGM news, there was a, a call this morning at, at 8 Pacific um, uh, around the big changes videos. So there's a little bit of, of that discussion in OGM calls and the OGM calls channel and then also on the mailing list. What are the big changes videos? Um, like so and stuff, is that what you mean? Pete, no, so, so that I don't mess it up, let me go find it in the mailing list. Um, oh, okay, I thought it was a quick answer. It's okay. Oh, so yeah, Jody, I think that's something I'll be working on with Jerry is that kind of trying to simplify the onboarding because um, coming on as a new member, member now, it's kind of like I was talking to Jerry. He's like, I was on this call this morning and I was kind of curious as to could I find that call? How do I know that call is happening? Those kind of, it's a bit scattered at the moment. So trying to unify a bit. Uh, so I, I pasted the, the meat of Jerry's OGM mailing list. Uh, message from 12 hours ago. So this is what the call is about. Um, and I guess I should add the subject line. So this is the so subject it, line. And to be honest, some of the challenge, sometimes the, the note is posted at like, you know, midnight or 1 a.m. Pacific time for an eight o'clock meeting the same day, which makes it pretty much guaranteed that I'm not going to get up in time for it unless it happens to be at a traditional time because I yep. didn't go to bed till about that time. <clears throat> you know, so I often don't see it the night before because it would land in my mailbox at 2 a.m. and announce an eight o'clock meeting. This, uh, the, that call also overlapped this call. So it was, you know, it was still going on when this call right. started. There were two different times, as I recall, but one was directly on top of this and the other one was at 8 a.m. And I just decided I would listen to it later <laughs> yeah cool thanks for that update yep any any other stuff we should cover bon appetit lauren <laughs> yeah you should Good tell us you, what you're cooking at least i'm cooking um cut up grilled potatoes and uh, chicken French and green beans with soy sauce. Sounds good. Cool. Well, um, everybody have a good day, good weekend, etc. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you as well. I hope to see yep. some of you good Monday call. and talk to some of you sooner. Okay, Thanks, everybody. Uh, it was a pleasure. Good to see you all. Bye-bye. Thanks all. Good to see you.